What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to jump in and talk about game updates that we'll be getting in Season of Dawn. Of course, Destiny players right now do have a lot of questions about the next season, and especially when it comes to the new content, we are very much ready for a reveal. But, of course, we're also curious to see what the other key game updates will be, and we have learned about a good few significant changes that we'll be getting in Season 9. So, considering these reveals tend to be a little bit fragmented, I figured we'd round up all of the game updates that we know about, and some of them are brand new, others have been detailed over the last three or four weeks. And so for any of you guys who do want a summary of what's going to change in Season 9, we'll break it down in this video. Initially, it looks like Season of Dawn will begin on December 10th, and we will be getting a full content reveal for this on Wednesday, December 4th. And so I will keep you posted with all of that information here on the channel, but of course after December 4th, we can expect even more details, patch notes, and reveals to take place as we approach the end of Season 8, so things will definitely get fairly busy. For now though, let's talk about what we know is changing as part of Update 2.7.0, which drops alongside Season of Dawn. Initially, Escalation Protocol Armor is being updated. So at the moment, we can get Armor 2.0 variants of the Escalation Protocol gear, but Bungie did tease a change to the armor recently, and going back to an earlier conversation, DMG suggested that the team was eager to tackle feedback on the one per week restriction for Escalation Protocol armor, so it seems entirely likely that this could be part of the update, but those changes will be detailed fully in the patch notes. Of course, for anyone who wants to farm out an entire Armor 2.0 set of that gear though, no longer having the one per week drop restriction will definitely be useful. Here's a brand new one. Thundercrash is going to see some kind of buff. So, of course, we've had a bunch of details about Solar subclass tuning. However, Thundercrash is a subclass that people have spoken about for quite some time. And so Cosmo simply said the team know about the feedback and it is being tuned in the next update. We don't have specific details on how they'll buff that super just yet. Maybe an increase to the radius of the damage and to the damage itself. Definitely curious to see what it'll be, but that is another one that we can expect to see in the update on December 10th. Before we talk more about subclass stuff, let's speak about exotic changes coming into the game. And so one we learned about a couple of weeks back is a buff to the drop rate of the Anarchy, which of course is the exotic for the Scourge of the Past raid. DMG said that it should match the change Bungie made to 1000 voices, which is currently at a 10% drop chance. He did add that we should stay tuned for official patch notes in case something changes between now and then, but it definitely sounds like a positive buff. One of the buffs that we are very eager to try out would be for the Xenophage. Of course, this is a new exotic from Shadowkeep. And for this bizarre exotic machine gun, they are increasing PvE damage by plus 50%, and they have increased the amount of ammo that can be pulled from crates in PvP, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Wings of Sacred Dawn is getting a little bit of a buff, and it ties into the updates that Bungie are making for the Dawnblade subclass, which we'll speak about in a bit, but Wings will grant 15% damage resistance while Tone of Dawn is active. It's definitely not a negative for the exotic, and we'll have to see how it works with the subclass changes. But then, of course, there is the one-eyed mask nerf, and they're adjusting the vengeance perk to remove the overshield granted from defeating an opponent that inflicted damage on a player. So it's still going to have the health regen, it's still going to have the enemy tracking and stuff, but the overshield is being completely removed. Let me know your thoughts about that one. DMG recently responded to some feedback about the Catalyst quest for the Ariana's Vow, and the fact that kills with the weapon don't actually help you progress with the Catalyst. And he said they're applying what they've learned here to future Catalysts in the game. And so hopefully some of the quests in general will be improved a little bit, but it also of course suggests that we're probably going to see even more Season Pass exotics that come with Catalyst quests and things like that. And so those are the more major exotic changes that we currently know about. And before we get into more sandbox stuff, let's speak about quality of life adjustments, bug fixes, and some of the kind of minor changes. So initially, Bungie did add lore tabs to all of the Garden of Salvation rewards. However, they still aren't visible in the game, and Cosmo confirmed that this should be fixed in that next update that we get in December. When it comes to the Iron Banner, there have been a lot of complaints about the Arsenal of Tricks bounty, and DMG has said that the team is aware and looking at changes to this for the future season. And from the way DMG said they're looking to update the bounty requirements, it looks like that one is going to remain in the game. And then of course we'll get a new quest or something for the reprised Iron Banner set that we'll get next season. Either way, hopefully no more annoying ability bounty. There is a triumph in the game called Perfect Gambit, and currently it isn't functioning quite as intended, but Cosmo did confirm that it's another thing that'll be getting fixed next season, so if that's one that affects you, it's definitely worth bearing in mind. DMG has also teased some changes that we're going to be seeing to Ada 1 and the Black Armory content, and of course, this season we have had a bunch of problems with things like the Izanagi's Burden Quest. But specifically feedback around the mod drops that you can get from Ada 1, rare Black Armory bounty drops and things like that, 
has continued, and so it looks like there will be further quality of life improvements for that content. And then also, we're going to be getting some improvements for mods in the game. So Bungie confirmed that they're introducing broad category mods for the Ammo Finder and Scavenger categories that will be automatically unlocked for all players and give us kind of wider options for tinkering with ammo, no matter what armor energy type we're using. That's obviously going to improve what we can do with some of the build stuff, but you're also removing restrictions on having multiple mods of the same type in a single piece of armor. That is bar a few exceptions, which they haven't specified just yet, but it will mean that we can stack things like hand cannon loader or shotgun ammo finder, and those are just specific examples. And generally speaking, whenever you can stack a mod, it'll provide a similar benefit to what an enhanced mod would. So double pulse rifle loader should give you the exact same effect as enhanced pulse rifle loader. And so they're very good changes, but they are specific quality of life changes for general mods in the game. And remember, we will get a new seasonal artifact, so some of those mods will be updated and completely replaced. And because of the new 2.0 system, even pinnacle gear, and of course season passes and the artifact, all of those kind of seasonal systems are things that we'll probably get a good few changes outlined for in the next couple of weeks when we see full patch notes. Now though, let's round up the rest of the ability and weapon tuning that we know about. I failed to mention the Recluse nerf thus far, and essentially at the moment when the Master of Arms perk is procced, it increases damage to roughly the same values as precision damage should be on the weapon, as well as buffing damage in general. And that's one of the reasons that the weapon is so strong, but they are going to remove the effect where Master of Arms increases damage to critical damage values. And so Master of Arms will still individually increase body shot and precision shot damage, but Bungie will be removing the kind of hidden effect in the weapon where it increases all damage to the equivalence of what you'd see if you were hidden crits on that enemy. So it definitely is a fairly significant nerf, but but remember that Recluse is also significantly better than a lot of similar weapons and especially SMGs. So while other SMGs hopefully will become more appealing, I still think Recluse has the potential to be the best SMG in the game, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about it. Separate to this, let's break down the subclass changes that Bungie are introducing for solar subclasses. And so, for top tree Dawnblade, Bungie are initially reducing the speed at which Burst Glide accelerates players in Daybreak. And they say that they know this will probably be a controversial change, but Icarus dashes while in Daybreak have increased speed and thrust to recapture the Burst Glide gameplay. On top of this, Icarus Dash can now be activated twice before it cools down, and then Bungie have introduced a new Celestial Fire Melee where you can send a spiral of three explosive solar projectiles. That certainly sounds pretty cool. And they've also reworked the Heat Rises perk, and you can now consume your grenade to extend glide time and dramatically reduce the in-air accuracy penalties for weapons. And of course, some of these changes will kind of pair in with what they did to the Wings of Sacred Dawn. We've got a rework for Winged Sun, where you can fire weapons, use Celestial Fire, and throw a grenade while gliding, and then airborne final blows will grant melee energy and extend the duration of heat rises. There is this specific rework for Icarus Dash, tap Crouch twice to dodge in midair, but dodging in Daybreak accelerates players farther and will cost less super energy while under the effects of heat rises. And so some interesting changes to get our heads around right there for the Dawnblade and we'll see how they play out in the game. But of course then we have adjustments for Bottom Tree Gunslinger. Bungie say initially that for three shot they've increased the auto aim distance and reliability when aiming down sights. And for six shot, they've shortened the damage fall off range to emphasize the short range gunfighter role with a lot of kill potential. However, they have made other changes like introducing a new explosive prox knife that can stick to surfaces and detonate when enemies pass nearby. So that sounds pretty cool. But then there is the new weighted knife, which is a high damage knife throw with a long wind up. It travels at high speeds, bounces once and does extra damage to the head. But precision shot final blows will recharge the melee completely and they will one hit kill to the head inside of PvP. So getting a little bit old school right there with that class again. There is a quality of life adjustment for Practice Makes Perfect, which lasts longer, but gives a little bit less energy per second. And Precision Hits will grant two stacks of that, but then there is the new knock em down where precision final blows will increase weapon stability and ADS speed. The timer starts at 10 seconds, but any additional final blows or assists can increase it up to 25 seconds. Casting your super with this buff above 20 seconds consumes the buff and grants extra damage, which they do point out will not stack with Celestial Nighthawk. I mean, that could get pretty nasty, couldn't it? But there's also a quality of life adjustment for the line em up perk, and old perks from Crowd Pleaser are now part of this perk, so Golden Gun can cause precision damage and precision shots will generate orbs of light. 
Then finally, we get to the middle path Sunbreaker, and the Roaring Flame perk has received a significant buff to its bonus damage. The buff will last 25% longer, and the base damage of Throwing Hammer melee ability has been increased. So they increased the impact damage of Throwing Hammer from 100 to 120, and increased Hammer Pickup Radius from 2 to 3.5 meters, as well as adjusting some of the Hammer Throw animations. But then for Roaring Flames, they've increased the damage bonus from 10% per stack to 25% per stack in PvP, as well as increasing the duration from 15 to 20 seconds. For the Burning Mole Super, they've increased that duration from 21.2 to 28.5 seconds, and they've reduced the Light Attack energy cost from 5 to 3%, adjusted the animation so that it flows seamlessly into chain Light Attacks without stopping, but then for the Heavy Attack Ground Slam, it will now detonate when it detects enemies above it, and the detonation radius has been increased to make a landing attacks more consistent, but it does have an increased energy cost from 6 to 8%, so there are a couple of trade-offs there, but for how much use the middle path Sunbreaker gets at the moment, I think the changes definitely sound more positive than what we currently have. So guys, I believe those are all of the details Bungie have given us about game updates that we'll be getting in December. Of course, there is the content reveal that we're still waiting for, and so in terms of new stuff, new rewards, all of that, be sure to stay tuned here on Wednesday as I will be live streaming what Bungie show off as part of that reveal. And DMG has told us that we can expect more information and patch note previews, which I'd imagine we'll probably get either on Wednesday as part of the reveal itself or, of course, in this week at Bungie on Thursday, where they tend to follow up with a few kind of answers and extra details. So, guys, I hope it has been useful. I know we've spoken about quite a few of these changes in different videos, but especially as we wait to get more information, we're at that quiet point in the season, I guess it makes sense to round all of this up and get a better picture of how the game is going to evolve. If you guys have enjoyed the video, a rating below is very much appreciated, and if you're new around here, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you up to date with everything related to the game. But otherwise, thanks as always for tuning in, guys, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.